Welcome everyone back to the Yo Bro Nation YouTube channel. Of course, I am Zach, the fun, so fun host. This is actually my second take. Um, normally, okay, so before I even get into anything, usually I would do these live. But with the issues that I had back on Wednesday trying to do Dynamite, I have just decided just to record. Uh, I want to do like a, a live stream at some point to... See if I can I can stream without my video being taken down. But until I actually do that, I'm just uploading my videos for you guys to watch them that way. But that out of the way, tonight's Raw felt slow. I was trying to describe it a minute ago, but t tonight's Raw just felt so uneven and just like... It <laughs> It felt like there was nothing really into the show. It felt like a lot of repeats from last week. The build for Backlash is just meh. Like, I'm, I'm starting to lose interest with the Drew McIntyre-Bobby Lashley match, even. Just the way that they're doing these shows just don't feel... They don't feel like they should, to me. It, it doesn't feel like a build for a pay-per-view. It doesn't feel like a wrestling show to me. Honestly, so like I'm I'm watching it and I'm just feeling bored. Like the three hours, like last week, the three hours went by pretty quick. Last week's show was a good show, wasn't a great show. But this week's show, I wouldn't say it was necessarily bad, but it definitely was not a good show either. And the three hours just went by so slow. Like it was like it crawled just inch uh it was it was horrible and i hated it i didn't hate the show i just i felt like nothing was accomplished tonight like nothing was really added to what we are already getting you had more of the street profits and the viking raiders doing their flipping anything you can do i can do better we talked about this whole retirement speech for ray mysterio Ray wasn't there, which I, okay, but it had nothing to do with Seth. Seth did his earlier, like, I don't know. And then rumors about Nia Jax hurting Kyrie Sane during a match was brought up, and Kyrie, you didn't see what actually happened. You just see the initial hit from that, and then that was cut and edited. The you know that's good for them because they can do that because they have um, they're editing everything so just tonight's raw just felt so blah that's the best way I can describe it it just felt blah this week no Shayna Baszler for a second week in a row um okay we had a, what was actually a really good United States title match until that got transformed into another tag team match it just felt predictable this week raw felt predictable yet again and as i'll say every week maybe i'm in the minority but just to me raw was it wasn't that good to me again not a bad show but not necessarily a good show either so raw of course you know, taking place in the PC with the crowd. I didn't write this down, but I did mention last week about how the crowd felt kind of... They felt like they were being told what to do prior to, you know, the tapings. Oh, we want you to do this. Because some of them in that crowd, like Jessamine Duke, you watch her... It's like every time someone comes up that she's supposed to like, she's all, woo! And I'm just like, I don't know, I'm saying like a lot. Like, like. It's like, okay, I, I get it, but she's supposed to be a heel character, right? And, and maybe this shouldn't even be a big deal to me, but she's supposed to be a heel character. And I see her just like overly, oh, like overdoing it with the chanting. So. It's not the fact that she's cheering for her face or whatever. It's just how um, 
how it doesn't feel sincere, the reactions that any of these people doing, which I'm sure most of us have probably figured they're just there getting paid to basically give noise. And they're doing noise, and the noise is helping, so that's a good thing. But this is your Raw Review for June 1st, 2020. Where has the time gone? That's my first question is where has the time gone? We're already in June. We are a week away from Backlash. So this was your pan ultimate episode before Backlash. And like I said, there were some good things in this show, but overall, my goodness, tonight's Raw was it tonight's Raw was hard to get through. I'm not even gonna lie. I had a miserable time with Raw. But y'all welcome. So let's go ahead. So I'll pull up my notes here. Sorry, minutes. So tonight's Raw kicked off with Seth Rollins coming out. Seth Rollins and his disciples of Austin Theory and Buddy Murphy. Rollins uh, says that it was a huge night and that he'll be having a match with Aleister Black and that Aleister Black is confused about, you know, things with Rey Mysterio, but that he will enlighten him tonight. And then he talks about Rey being humble and too modest to call himself a legend and doesn't have what it takes to come out and outright state that he's retiring. But Seth, Seth is willing to do that for him. That's why Seth has set up this retirement ceremony for Rey Mysterio. He goes on to talk about how, you know, he was chosen as a sacrifice for Seth so Seth could become the man that he is today that Ray came in his darkest hour and appeared before him. Like, very, like, weird stuff. He plays a video package for Ray Mysterio, showing some of Ray's highlights, and then showing Ray having his eye jammed into the Seth. Seth then says that he wants to personally induct Ray Mysterio into the WWE Hall of Fame. Um, out comes Aleister Black. Aleister Black attacks Rollins. We go to commercial break. When we come back from the commercial breaks, Black and Black and Rollins, uh, they're kind of just testing each other out back and forth. Um, Aleister Black, though, does keep getting the upper hand. You can see the frustration on Seth Rollins' face. Aleister Black, though, uh, gets a kind of... I can't think of the words. Like, I'm, I'm literally having... Uh, Blocks today. He gets distracted by Theory and Murphy, which allows Seth Rollins to drop kick him. Then he gets on top of him, just starts to pummel him. Rollins kind of slows the pace down. They start to trade moves back and forth. Rollins then sends Aleister Black to the outside, to the out, outside of the ring. Uh, Rollins tries to have his guys go around, but out comes um, Humberto Carrillo. Rollins then, you know, they go to commercial break. Rollins is in control, coming back from the break. Aleister Black finally hits a boot, but then sling blade by Seth Rollins right after for a two count. Aleister Black does start to make a comeback with some strikes and some kicks. Hits a moonsault only for a two count. Some more back and forth between these guys. A very stiff click, kick. A very stiff kick by Aleister Black, which he goes right into a German for a two count. Misses a black mass. Gets an insiguri from Rollins. A kick like a little super kick, then a falcon arrow for a two count. Seth Rollins goes for the frog splash, but uh, Aleister Black ends up getting his knees. They end up fighting on the apron. Rollins ends up uh, trying to powerbomb Aleister Black on the apron, but that gets blocked, and Black kicks him into the ring post. He falls out, and then Aleister Black does a moonsault from the apron to the outside. They both end up getting back into the ring, fighting on top. Black gets pushed off. Seth hits the frog splash this time for a two count. Rollins goes for the curb stomp, but Black does move out of the way. Grabs Seth's arm, gets him into an arm bar. Seth gets out of that, power bombs him for a two count. Rollins then tries to springboard off of the ropes for the knee. Black actually moves out of that. Black ends up setting, it actually hits him with a knee himself. Black sets up for the black mask, but Murphy and Theory get on the apron. Humberto pulls them both down. They start fighting. That allows uh, a distraction for Seth Rollins to get a schoolboy for a two count. But then Aleister Black ends up getting a roll-up of his own for the three count and wins the match. 
As soon as the match is over, though, they go and attack uh, Aleister Black. Humberto gets in the ring. They end up beating him up. They hold Aleister Black and allow Seth Rollins to then get a stomp on to him. Seth says that he wants to be a hero. He told him to stay out of the way. This is what he gets for being a hero. And then he curb stomps Aleister Black as well. And they leave the ringside area. Match itself, pretty good match. Uh, I think even these guys a little bit more time or just maybe without television in front of the crowd, this match would probably be one of those, you know, holy shit matches. But like I said, good match. Um, the, the promo before it, Seth, I think Seth is really starting to come into his own with the character, with this whole Messiah thing. And it's like every week he becomes less Jesus and more Marilyn, or more Marilyn, more Charlie Manson. The more you get into this, and I'm not going to say too much yet because there's still the segment with Rey Mysterio to come up later. So I'll have more to say as far as I think where they're going with the character and what they could possibly do. I'll save that for later. But the match, I liked it. I would, I'd probably go back and rewatch this match. Interview with uh, Charlie Caruso. She interviews Angel Garza and Zelina Vega. She shows them what happened last week with Garza's match with Owens and how he attacked him and attacked the leg. Asks him what they think about, you know, people's comments about this being a controversial match. Zelina Vega goes off about it being controversial. Garza puts his hand on her shoulder and says, hey, I've got this. He says, you know, the old saying is everything is fair in love and war. He says, you should, you know, you should know that he loves war. He says he, you know, or Vega says, you know, he saw what he wanted and he went for it. And then he says something. I don't know. I, I couldn't catch his his accents really thick. So it was hard to hear him. But he gave Charlie a rose, starts to walk away. Vega then grabs that rose and just kind of rips it up and says, boo. Like it was your standard promo. It, it accomplished, I guess, what it was supposed to accomplish. It was it was nothing like. Just more of the flirting. I don't even know if this is going to go anywhere. Just made Zelina Vega look pretty much more like a winch, if I'm putting it nicely. So, like they did last week with Ric Flair, having him uh, give his thoughts on the greatest wrestling match ever. Sure. HBK gives his opinions on the Randy Orton Edge match that is taking place at Backlash. He talks about how, you know, he's had a few great wrestling matches himself. He brings up Undertaker. He brings up the Ric Flair match. He brings up Iron Man match and the ladder match. So Charles basically says he could go on and on and on. And he does think that this match has the potential to be the greatest wrestling match ever. Oh, well, of course he does. He's employed by the WWE. So why wouldn't he? You know what I mean? But... Uh, he does say that he thinks Edge is going to win this match. Uh, because he's experienced this and that. So that's what that was. Shawn Michaels via satellite, probably from the you know performance center, giving his opinion on the match that they keep hyping for whatever reason. They just keep hyping it as the greatest wrestling match ever, but it's not. I, I have to adjust my camera, guys. It's not centered like I want it to be. But whatever. We get some highlights I have nothing to say. I, I'm holding all my thoughts about this greatest wrestling match ever till I do my preview and predictions next weekend. Then I have a lot to say. But they do give us some highlights from last week's um, incidents with Bobby Lashley and Lana and everything going on. You see Lana talking to MVP, talking his ear off, talking about, you know, he's doing this to her Bobby Lashley, blah, 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 blah. And MVP says that, you know, unlike her, he has stuff to do and he does not have the time nor the desire to sit and listen to her. She says, well, I just can't bite my tongue no more. And says that he's just leeching off for her to resurrect what is a dead career. He snickers, says, well, that's not true, but let's say it is. Wouldn't that make two of us? She pauses, looks down, slaps him. Ooh, whatever. I have no clue. Zero fucking clue where they're going with this Lana bullshit. What is Lana's purpose? 
Why is she even a part of the story? What is it building to? Lana screwing Bobby over? She says she was coming out to the ringside tonight during MVP's match with all that. Uh, she has the interview later, so I'm going to call, ooh. And then literally played zero factor into the match. Zero factor. So I don't know. I don't know what to make of this. It just seems irrelevant at this point with Lana. I mean, MVP himself has been literally the MVP of this program. Him and Drew, great chemistry. Bobby, I think, is playing his part really well, but Lana, and it's not because Lana's a woman. It's just all they've had her do up to this point is stand and scream. They gave her no character. So what are they doing with her? Someone tell me why I'm supposed to care about Lana. Once you do, I'll, I'll, I'll reassess and I'll see. Maybe I'll like her. I don't know. Caleb Braxton interviews Apollo Crews at, in the ring, uh, asks him how he's felt as, you know, with his first week as champion. He talks about having all these feelings of you know being happy and uh, humble and all this other stuff. And she says that you know, he gets a chance to have an open challenge tonight. He says you know, he's had this list of you know, feelings, but he's also had a list of people he's going to face. So the guy that he picked you know, is really deserving, and it's Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens then... Proceeds to come out, you know, first, you know, congratulated, you know, congratulates him. Uh, then it's like, you know, you know, he's never down, you know, to pass up a challenge. But if this is out of pity and Apollo basically tells him it's not about pity, that is, you know, respect. So and says, OK, well, if it's about respect, cool, but I'm still sorry. I still feel bad. And Apollo's kind of asking why he says, because your first title reign is going to be a short one. Tosses the match, you get the mic drop. Ooh. So you get Kevin Owens versus Apollo Crews for the United States Championship. This was, up till the end, probably the best match of the night. You get these guys, just, you know, good exchange. Like, they, they had really good chemistry, I think. And maybe, maybe I'm alone in this, but I think they had fantastic chemistry. You get a clothesline to the out. I mean, it's kind of just back and forth exchanges. But you get a clothesline to the outside by Kevin Owens. He goes to the outside, tries to do a senton to the outside uh, off of the apron. Let's see, where am I at here? So yeah, senton to the outside off the apron by Kevin Owens. Then he goes up top to go for a senton, hits that, gets a two count. Um, he ends up kicking Apollo Crews, this really weird segment. I'm sorry, I can't even read my own handwriting sometimes. But he kicks Apollo kind of low. So Apollo falls. You can hear him groaning like, oh, like, I, I don't know. I guess he got kicked in the junk. But the referee even says, well, you hit him in the groin. Okay, I thought that was a disqualification, but all right, fair enough. So they get back up. Or Apollo gets back up. Owens asks him if he's okay. Oh. He decks him. So they just start fighting back and forth. It goes to commercial break. They come back from commercial break, and they're still punching and, and hitting each other. You get a power slam by Apollo Crews for only a two count. He goes for an Olympic slam attempt, but then get Owens gets out of that, hits a super kick, attempts the, and then hits a moonsault off the top rope for a two count. Owens then goes for the pop-up power bomb, but that's countered. Countered into an insiguri by Apollo Crews, who then does hit the Olympic Slam this time for a two count. He then goes for a moonsault, a standing moonsault, gets only a two count. Then Apollo Crews starts doing these splashes into the corner. He hits two of them, goes for a third one. Owens moves, hits the super kick, goes for a senton, but Apollo Crews manages to get his knees up. It's about this time Angel Garza and Andrade come out of the ring, come out. They attack them, so it's a double disqualification. It cuts to commercial break. We come back, and I knew this was going to be the case, but now this has turned into a tag team match playa as Andrade and Angel Garza take on Kevin Owens and Apollo Crews. <laughs> you need to come over here so people can hear your voice just, just this one time. What? Well, they didn't hear you on there last time. I mean... So this is sidekick Susie, everybody. She just got back. So... <laughs> There, she could say she was on camera. <laughs> um, this this match, man, uh, Garza and Andrade basically were in control. 
uh, working over Apollo Crews. You get a nice, beautiful dropkick, though, by Angel Garza onto Apollo Crews, uh, then rips off his pants and throws them at uh, Kevin Owens. Uh, Apollo Crews, though, keeps trying to fight through it. He ends up getting hot tag. Garza immediately runs, tags in Andrade. But before he can even get out of the ring, Owens is, like, on top of him like a fly on shit. <laughs> but he ends up being able to distract the ref just enough to get an eye poke in, and then Andrade basically gets a hold of him and starts working over the leg by putting Kevin Owens into a half crab. Um, Owens keeps trying to fight back, does end up getting a tag to Apollo Crews. He gets some more back and forth with uh, him. Garza at one point tries to do a wing clipper, but he escapes that. Uh, some back and forth with him and Andrade. Uh, Towards the end of the match, Garza ends up clipping Kevin Owens' leg while he's standing on the apron. That distracts uh, Apollo Crews, who gets rolled up for a two count. He ends up, I think, hitting an enziguri uh, and ends up getting him up for that power bomb, that spinning power bomb for the three count. So the bad guys tried to get a sneak attack in. Fresh as Daisy, still lost to the guys who just had a 20 minute match. So. Apollo Crews and Kevin Owens win with that move. What's this setting up? Fuck if I know. Probably Kevin Owens versus Angel Garza. Maybe a fatal four-way. I, I have no clue. I don't need to see Andrade versus Apollo Crews again, if I'm just being honest. I don't need to see it. I'm not saying the match would be bad, but at this point, I've seen it twice. The first match was clearly the better of the two, so... I don't know, maybe with pay-per-view, they'll have a better match than this last one, but that's probably where it's heading. So, I don't know. <sighs> we get Miss Kayla Braxton again, interviewing Asuka, who comes into frame dancing. Do, 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 do. I mean, Asuka's fucking crazy, but we like it, right? We all love Asuka. Uh, she talks in Japanese when asked about Nia Jax. Basically says she's going to beat Nia Jax. Uh, then asked about her match with Charlotte tonight. Uh, she speaks more Japanese and then says she is always better than Charlotte and Charlotte stays the same. And then says the Empress bows to no one. It's Asuka and it's a promo. Do I need to say anything else? We love Asuka. We move on. We all love Asuka. Oh, she got the dragon. Uh, yeah, bring the dragon over. I want everyone to meet Daenerys, the d -d dragon. She's the baby. She is the baby. Oh, there you go. I'm like, I'm not sure where it goes. I got you. So this is Daenerys. Y'all can say hello to Daenerys. Daenerys is making her official debut for the Raw review. She's like, the what? <laughs> she's, making her, she's the mascot of the Yo Bro Nation uh, YouTube channel. Is she? Yeah, she is. Go back. <laughs> she's awesome. She's an awesome little thing. <laughs> So, from something happy to something crappy. Okay, not crappy. Actually, I won't lie. I actually laughed tonight. I actually did laugh tonight. I laughed pretty pretty hardly. Hard, heartily. I can't talk. Viking Raiders versus the Street Profits and the Anything You Can Do, I Can Do Better Challenge week five, four. Yes, that was bowling. <laughs> the funniest thing about this is how... Everyone seems to find Eric to be cute. I'm sorry, Ro. I'm going to call him Ro because I can't call him by their, their uh, WWE main roster names. They're still Hanson and Ro to me. So Hanson, you know, he's called cute. Um, see, I can't remember which one's actually who. I just know by Hanson and Ro. But they're, they're doing this whole bowling thing with the Street Profits. And I'm not going to lie, I, I'm bored of it. But tonight was actually funny. I'll give them that. I actually did laugh tonight with, with the whole thing. They're bowling, you know, starts with the shoes. And the Street Profits are all confused about what the hell the shoes are for. And they end up like pulling a turkey leg out of the freaking thing that brings up the bowling balls. They're like... It was just ridiculous. And they, you know, run into the cooking area, the kitchen. Oh, Jesus Christ, I'm a cook and I can't think of it. Run into the kitchen to get into the freezer. And they pull up more turkey legs. They almost get kicked out. Apparently, it's something that's happened before. It, it just goes on. The insanity 
And the funny thing is, finally the street prophets, you know, yell, you know, we want the smoke, and all the lights get shut off, and they do basically um, star bowling or whatever the hell it's called around here. Cosmic bowling. Thank you. They're doing some cosmic bowling shit. And they actually get, like, it's like 130 to something. But then the Viking Raiders decide, you know, so Hansen decides he's going to take and chuck Roe. I'm sorry. Roe decides he's going to chuck Hansen uh, down the alley with the ball, and they get a strike and win the game. I guess we're going to get another week of this. They're tied up. So it's two to two, so they gotta have the tiebreaker, right? I guess I don't know what's what's next week. They'll probably have something next week, which will actually set up a match for backlash, or they'll just set up the match for backlash next week. I have no clue at this point. Fuck it. What what, what are we gonna see them do next? Who can hold their breath the longest? Um, they're gonna play some solitaire. We we gonna play some five card studs. Who's the better at poker? Uh, oh, oh, maybe horseshoes, right? We're gonna play some horseshoes. <laughs> Gotcha. That's it. They can play four square. They can play, so they can play four square. I mean, hell, that WWE, really call me up. I'll, I'll give you guys ideas for days. Okay. So we're supposed to get Billy Kay versus Nikki Cross, but all the Iconics, Alexa and Nikki, they're all backstage. They're all fighting. Um, they come back from commercial break. This match was a nothing match. It, it just, it just, it was just there to set up more story. It was really nothing until you get towards the end. But basically, Nikki goes ham on Billy Kay to start the match. Billy, you know, kind of hits her with a big boot. And then the match is just basically Billy Kay working over Nikki Cross. Uh, Nikki starts to build some momentum, sets some clothesline, a corner frogs, a corner splash, goes into a bulldog, tries to come off the top rope with a uh, crossbody, but misses. Billy Kay hits her with a sit out power bomb. For the three count. It, literally, that was the bulk of the match. I mean, there's a couple things here or there, but it was just kind of dragged out with hold. <sighs> Man, I don't want to sound negative. I really don't. But I don't give a fuck about the Iconics. I don't. Why should I care about a team that, when they had their last run as champions, did nothing? And I'm supposed to take them serious now? Why? Why would I do that? They're not serious. I can't take them serious. You know what I mean? I mean, again, I don't want to sound negative, but this is one of those things about Raw that just the third week in a row, these teams have had issues. Fourth week in a row. And it's leading to what? Another match at Backlash when they're going to defend the titles on SmackDown this week? Like, what are we, what is the point? What is the point? There's no tag teams in the women's division. You, you, like, literally, Fire and Desire broke up. Uh, the, the Kamara, 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 ugh, I can't talk. Carmella and uh, Dana Brooke, I think, were supposed to be a team, but that never happened. I mean, so you got the Iconics, Alexa, and Nikki. Who else is there? Sasha and Bailey are somewhat of a team, but they're not really. Tell me. Who else is there in the women's division for the tag teams? There's not another team. You got Asuka and Kyrie Sane, but they're both doing single stuff. But I could think of legitimately three teams, and that's it. That's all I, I know. I, I can't think of any other teams. This, this women's tag team division is garbage, and anyone who tells me that I'm wrong, no offense, Go get your head checked. Seriously. I don't want to be negative Nancy and tell everyone that they're wrong. I want to be a positive guy, but this division is just atrocious. <sighs> I guess they need to do some call-ups from NXT. I, I don't know. So we get an interview with Drew McIntyre. Um, he's asked about his, you know, stuff going on with MVP and Bobby Lashley. He says he loves a challenge. He says it's like week nine as champion. Um, and he says, basically, he, it boils down to anyone who wants to step up to him, he'll line them up, he'll knock them all down, and send them a one-way ticket to Claymore Country. That was the gist of Drew McIntyre's promo. Look, Drew McIntyre, love him or hate him, Drew as the champion in this empty arena era, I think is what we're calling it, for wrestling, 
has has been one of the standouts in the company. I liked him as champion. I just wish everything he was doing was in front of a crowd. And I think it would all seem better for him. I, I think it would come across better. It's not come across bad by any means. But I can definitely tell you, Drew as a champion has been good. I just, I just miss the crowds. I think that's basically what it is. So the moment, the moment we all waited for, Rey Mysterio giving us an update on his injury and whether or not he's going to retire. When asked uh, when he was going to return to action, he says, honestly, he doesn't know. He doesn't have a timetable on that. It could be two weeks. It could be never. Uh, he's asked if he ha- if he's here to retire. He says he honestly doesn't know, but he does want to address Seth Rollins. He says, uh, Seth, for someone who claims to be someone's positive, he carries a lot of negativity. And... He's talking to him about, he's just basically addressing everything with Seth and how, you know, he's not, he isn't someone who was sent to be sacrificed. He basically calls that bogus. Dominic steps into the screen, tells his dad, Papa, which is weird. Like, you're a grown ass man. Stop calling your dad Papa. But then tells him um, that, you know, something needs to be done. Someone from this family needs to go and deal with the Seth Rollins situation. Ray calms him down. Ray says, you know, you guys want an official statement from me? Well, here you go. He says he is usually a man of forgiveness. He really is. But he can't forgive Seth Rollins on this. He said his wife Angie, his son Dominic, and his daughter Aaliyah all had to sit and helplessly and watch him as his eye was gouged out with that. You know, he's their provider, He's their protector, and they had to sit and watch him bleed. He says, Seth, you said I cried like a baby, but he retor- he's just like, you know, whatever. Um, but he says, you know, I am a man of forgiveness, but damn you, Seth Rollins. Damn you. He tells Dominic, let's go. Dominic just sits there, looks dead in the camera, and says, Seth, you say you're a man of scripture? Well, I for an eye. Tries to look as intense as he can. And he walks off. So basically, I think what we're going to get here, since maybe they're just giving Ray some time off, I th- it, it sounds like they're seriously going to go with the route of Dominic versus Seth Rollins. Or them as a tag team or something. But Dominic is clearly clearly going to be uh, involved in this. I, I have no doubt in my mind Dominic's going to be involved in this. What Ray said, good stuff. Ray's, you know, good Sound passion, sound like he really meant what he was saying. So I like the promo, the you know, the whole thing with with Ray. Um, good, they're playing out Ray. Ray's not going nowhere. You know, all these people talking about is he leaving WWE uh, to go to AEW? You know, everyone's going to AEW. Everyone's not going to AEW, but Ray for sure not leaving. Pretty much confirmed tonight. He's sticking around. Just don't know when he'll be back. So before I get into all the Nia Jax and, and oh, okay. So yeah, basically, before I even go that route. Um, so this whole Messiah character, I talked about it being like Charlie Manson, right? And where this could go. Now you get Dominic, who's like really like ready to just go in on Seth Rollins. But Ray is like, no, 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 we'll, we'll you know, whatever happens, happens. I could see this playing out, and I'm sure I'm not the only person who's thought this or even said this, but I could see this playing out with Dominic turning on his father because he wants his father to be aggressive, and he'll somehow, you know, look, you were weak. Seth Strong, and you were weak. Like, somehow he'll, this will play into Seth manipulating Dominic to turn and go with him and turn on his father as the ultimate sacrifice of Rey Mysterio. Leading to eventual match, whatever. But I see it going and playing out in some form or fashion with this. Um, hell, fuck, maybe I'm crazy. Tell me in the comments. Am I crazy? Probably so. Anyways, so before I get to the Nia Jax, Kyrie Sane stuff, they did bring up Grunt and our truth and their little stupid promos back and forth last week. Well, as most people have predicted, Gronk is no longer the 24-7 champion. At home with one of his buddies, going to do a TikTok video. Uh, his buddy 
is to, you know, there's like person out in the garden and uh, Gronk's like, wait, who's that? He's like, oh, it's just a gardener. He, you know, he's doing this. Gronk's like, okay. So Gronk turns around, starts dancing again. And then uh, his buddy takes off the shirt and he's going to referee shirt. He's like, wait, what are you doing? And then, of course, R-Truth is there. R-Truth rolls him up with the most devastating move. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, gets the three count. R-Truth is once again, I don't know, like a 29-time 24-7, European Continental Television Champion or whatever the fuck he calls it. Slurpee champ. Whew. R-Truth has done that. It was a pointless segment. It was just to get the title off of Rob Gronkowski because he's going back to Tampa Bay. Even the guy at the end's like, come on, man. You know, don't worry about it. We have to get the title off you, man. Got a new career coming. Go to the Buccaneers. Good plug for Tampa Bay, I suppose. I don't I don't know. So Nia Jax versus Kyrie Sane. Nia comes out, just says, Remember, I didn't start this. She says this. Basically says she's going to, you know, they're just bullying her or some bull crap. I, I don't give a damn what Nia Jax had to say. I really don't. The rumors did come out, though, that Nia Jax um, hurt Kyrie Sane during this taping. That when she threw into the steps, it busted Kyrie open. They checked her, but they cleared her to compete. So she got back in and finished the match. So the match is going along, and I'm keeping an eye out for this. So they finally get to the part where the steps are. And you see Nia Jax throw Kyrie, like by the hair, into the steps. And, most, and I know a lot of people say, oh, it was an accident. She didn't mean to. But this woman constantly hurts people. And I'm not saying she does it on purpose. I'm just saying maybe she's not the safest in the ring. Maybe she needs to work on her skills a little bit. Let me be clear. I'm not saying she does it on purpose. Okay? Don't no one put words in my mouth. I know this is a touchy subject for people. I'm not saying she's bad in the ring. I'm not saying she should never wrestle. I'm not saying she's anything else. I'm just saying maybe she should go back and work on her shit. This is twice for sure now that she's hurt Kyrie. So, and then there's others, oh, Becky's nose and others. Like, it's not as excessive as some people make it out to be, for sure. But you do see her grab Kyrie by the hair and throw her. Someone said that, oh, it was just Kyrie trying to hit the steps a certain way. But no, she literally went face first into the steps. Didn't trip over nothing. She was just basically tossed by her. And it didn't come out right. So they they cut it to where you didn't see the blood, but they played it off where Kyrie... Ba I, I guess they stopped rolling, cleaned up Kyrie, and said, okay, lay back down, and we're just going to finish the match as is. <sighs> Incidents happen. They've actually banned the buckle bomb because of when she hurt Kyrie with the buckle bomb just weeks ago, right after WrestleMania. So, again, I'm not saying Naya is a bad wrestler. Bless you. But what I am saying is they need, they, they need to do something. I'm not saying, you know, kick her out. You're at the PC. Work with her. You're at the PC. Work with her. Help shore, shore her up. You know, get her more better equipped, I guess. I don't know. But she she's hurting people. Not, again, not at the rate that others are saying she is, but she has hurt people. I will not go as far as to say she doesn't deserve to be in the ring. I will not go as far as to say take her job away. I will not do any of that because that is not fair. That is not my place to say. I have not wrestled. I've watched wrestling for 20 years, granted, but that I can't say any of that. That's not my place to say. So all that aside... <sighs> the match itself was whatever. Uh, Naya tried to use her power. Kyrie just kind of tried to out quicker and do stuff. Naya, you know, gets drop kicked right out of the gate, tries using her power, throws Kyrie around a little bit. Kyrie does get a sleeper in, uh, gets Naya down to her knees, hits her with a series of axe kicks, and then a nice elbow. 
Kyrie goes up top. Nia grabs her, tries to go into a power slam, but Kyrie counters that into a DDT for only a one count. Uh, Nia then just kind of throws her off. Um, N- Nia gets into the corner. Kyrie runs in, doing a sliding elbow. Uh, Nia does roll to the outside, and that's when the accident, the incident happened, where Nia throws her into the steps and then rolls her back in the ring with a leg drop for a three count. Oscar then comes into the ring. Nia leaves. They have a stare down. I've said all I have to say about what happened. I'm not going to harp on it again. Just WWE do something so it doesn't hurt another person. You know, get her just better prepared. You're there at the PC. The trainers, I'm sure you could get them in there on a day. Just do something, I guess. I don't know. So like last week, when Edge did his promo this week, Randy Orton does his promo. Again, these guys, if you're going off a promo alone, they are building this feud up fantastically. Match wasn't great. I loved it, personally, but I know majority did not. But their last man standing... 38 minutes, whatever. I liked it. Randy Orton says, you know, he's been sitting at home with everything going on. Says he's caught up on, he's got cut up on things on the WWE Network. You know, Undertaker's Live Ride, Ride Along, all these other shows. He, uh, he talks about how, you know, people, everyone there had things in common about Ric Flair being, you know, the best to ever lace up a pair of boots, and he agrees. He said that was until last week when Ric Flair said that he was the best to ever lace a pair of boots. He says, Edge, you accused me of just coming in, being ungrateful, this just being a paycheck, blah, blah, blah. He says, you're right. I, I That is everything you said is true. He says, and it eats you alive. Because I can just get out of bed in the morning, come in, and just prove that I'm the best. He says that, you know, he laid the bait and Edge, you know, bit. And that Backlash, he's going to prove, you know, that he's the better man. And he with the three most devastating letters of all time, RKO. Okay. I know I sound like I don't care about the, the whole thing, but sometimes WWE's just, their lines are dumb. But the promo was good, and up till the end, I really liked it. I just, I can't can't take them serious about this being called the greatest wrestling match. I legitimately, I just, I can't do it. I I, I can't. It's not going to be the greatest wrestling match. Maybe the greatest wrestling match this week, uh, or that week. Maybe the greatest wrestling match of the month, but of the year, that's pushing it. But of all time? What? No. Sorry, guys. Just, it's not, it's not going to (sighs) be. But the promo, yeah, promo was good. I do look forward to the match. I think it's going to main event backlash. I don't know. I'm going to move on. I'm not going to harp on this. So, Charlotte uh, versus Asuka. Charlotte comes out, cuts a promo about the NXT talent being there, how she wants them to, to succeed. So that way she can make them all bow down to her. And then she talked about how she always makes Asuka bow. Charlotte was in control of this match at the beginning, talking trash to Asuka. Starts working over Asuka's leg. Asuka would try to fight back, but Charlotte would just kind of keep keep going at that leg. Asuka, though, eventually hits a really big sidekick. Hits uh, a German on Charlotte. Tries to go for the drop kick off the top rope, but does miss. Charlotte goes for natural selection. That gets countered into an arm bar, which then gets countered into a Boston Crab by Charlotte, which then is countered into a leg lock by Asuka, which then gets countered into a German by Charlotte. Asuka then does eventually try to get the arm bar in again, but Charlotte lifts her up and then slams her back down to the mat for only a two count. Charlotte does go for a figure four, but Asuka kind of pulls herself towards the ropes. Uh, Kind of kicks at Charlotte. Charlotte then boots Asuka, knocking her off the apron to the outside of the ring. Then Asuka's music starts playing, and out comes Nia Jax with the mask, mocking Asuka. Uh, Asuka gets up, ends up getting counted out. Somehow that was the quickest 10 count ever. And then gets clotheslined by gets clotheslined by uh, Nia Jax, who leaves and walks away. 
Charlotte won by count out. Okay. That it's not their WrestleMania match. I mean, nothing would be their WrestleMania match. But it was a good match. A good television match between two people who do have really good chemistry, in my opinion. Um, the, the ending was crap. We had we had a couple of false finishes this week, and man, can we do some actual finishes? I'm not asking for much. So then we get the interview with Lana that I mentioned earlier. Then it's main event time, which they kept this match. I guess they kept this because it was short on time. I'm not sure. But, you know, Lana comes out and Lashley's just kind of looking like, why is she out here? This match was Drew McIntyre dominating MVP, a chop, a clothesline, hits him with a Glasgow kiss. Um... Lashley then gets between them on the outside. MVP, MVP pushes Drew into the post, rams him into the barricade in the glass, gets him back in the ring. Drew McIntyre gets advantage back, goes for the Claymore, but Bobby Lashley pulls out MVP. Uh, then Drew McIntyre, this dude's 270 pounds, 280, whatever, six foot seven, does a fucking swanton over the top rope, lands on both of those guys, throws MVP back into the ring. Hits him with the Claymore for the three count. As soon as the bell rings, in comes Bobby Lashley, who locks him in to the full Nelson. And that's how Raw goes up there. Like, literally the match started, and I think it was like 9.58. This match was given no time. So, bring in, like I said earlier, bring in Lana out to literally do nothing. She played nothing into it. You know, she played it like, oh, but I can be out there during his. Ooh, like... What was the point? What was the point? There was no point to them to them having her out there. Other than, hey, I guess we should put on on some TV. I guess. I, I don't know. So it wasn't there was there wasn't much of a match to judge, not much of a match to be like, oh that was a good match, it was a bad match. It was it was there. This was probably the big I mean, honestly, since Drew won the title at WrestleMania. And this is just my opinion. I can't speak for anyone else. But to me, I think this was Drew McIntyre's weakest segment that he's been on Raw since becoming champion. Because they took the focus off of Drew to make it about Lana. But then Lana played zero factor into this. And it still ended up being about Drew and Bobby in the end. But they didn't get no time to build any story. So, I don't know. It's Like I said, Raw tonight just felt weird to me. It felt like... A pointless just nothing like it, I, it was dumb I, I didn't like raw tonight again not bad but just i didn't like it so that's it for me guys honestly my throat's getting dry so i don't know you guys let me know what you thought about raw i'm trying to stay positive you know thankful that we get wrestling with everything that's going on but if you are going to put on a show give me a show that i'm going to enjoy and hey entertainment's subjective i get that but my entertainment, I expect high quality. I'm an Attitude Era baby. I grew up watching the golden age of wrestling. So I have a high quality bar. So you guys can go to Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff down in the description below. Join us on Patreon if you want to. You can donate to us on um, Streamlabs if you want to. Nothing's required. The only thing I ask is you guys hit the like button, share this video, and subscribe to the channel. I am Zach. Thank you guys for coming in tonight and watching this Raw review. And remember, join the nation. I'll talk to you guys later.